Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Handler. I am your case handler, the partner of the personal injury department here at Polk Polk Isaac DeSico, AKA PPID. And you are officially now cruising with the case handler. Things have changed a little bit though. I'm not in my uh, home office. Uh, I am in my home backyard and uh, trying to get some fresh air and maybe change it up a little bit, keep everybody on their toes now that I have my laptop set up. Uh, so the background and the scenery may be different, but the message is 1000% the same. We are attorneys who care. We are attorneys who wanna help. We are attorneys that have been giving back to the community that has embraced us by not only giving quality legal representation, but giving you 100% free consultations, whether it's personal injury or immigration. If you've got a question, we have the answer. We're here to help and we're happy to help. Before we get started, I'd like to give out the phone number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529 or 844 844- PPID Law. Uh, again, my name is Adam Handler. I have on with me today uh, a few wonderful attorneys at the firm, uh, managing partner, the maestro Conrad Pollock uh, of the Immigration Department, uh, Nelson the Maverick Madrid, a uh, partner of the Immigration Department, and Alexandra the Boss Lady Bondikoff, uh, an associate of the Immigration Department who really has uh, extensive knowledge with respect to um, uh, work-based uh, adjustments. And uh, we'll even let Squeeze, David Anarchy Squeeze, uh, David Squeeze Anarchy, uh, thank join, you, the thank party, you. join the party today. Uh, he is, of course, the captain of this ship, and we salute you. I uh, hope you had a wonderful weekend, and let's get this party started right. It's 8.35 on Tuesday, May 26th, and we are ready to rock. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good you so morning. much for that. Yeah. Adam, uh, th thanks for switching up the, the, uh, the entire view of the, of the landscape overall of this cruising with the case sander. You're cruising on the outside in your garden right now, you know, looking all cool. But, but, but why does it look like you need sunglasses? Do, do I? Uh, it's not that sunny here yet. Wait, I mean, like, you know, you know, maybe maybe as the morning progresses, we'll get the sunglasses on. But I'm more concerned about the fact that my neighbors and people walking past my house are going to think that I'm talking to myself right now, which is, is known, has been known to happen. But, you know, giving legal advice to people walking uh, past me could be weird. Uh, but we are ready to go. And uh, the, the, the calls flooded in this weekend. No, no surprise. People listening to this station and people on Facebook and social media checking us out have been taking advantage of our offer of a 100% free phone consultation with respect to immigration and personal injury. And the calls are flooding in. We have uh, a bunch of consultations set up today. Um, I believe Alexandra, you've been handling some of these phone consultations, correct? I have, yes. Wonderful. And we'll, we'll talk, we'll get back to you in a minute about some of those calls that you're getting. Uh, I'm sure you're seeing a pattern of questions that people are asking and, and, and thoughts as to how people um, are going to proceed uh, now that uh, the courts are, are starting to thaw out and, 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 and open up. So we look forward to that. Uh, Conrad, what's going on, man? How was your weekend? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a very nice weekend. Weather was great. Um, seems like it went awfully fast. Um, and I hadn't, just like we've discussed, uh, hadn't really given much thought to it in advance of the weekend coming because it's just, you know, everyone's home anyway. But um, laid off the uh, computer other than, you know, I got the notices from the n numerous uh, people that reached out following our show over the weekend. And we did get a lot of calls, which is great. Um, but it was a very nice weekend, quiet, family, um, just uh, it was quick, you know, and here we are back again. It's Tuesday morning and it um, seems like I've uh, seems like I never left, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, how was your weekend? <laughs> it was good. Quiet, relaxing. It's actually funny. Uh, on Thursday, I told my children, um, you know, we could sleep late tomorrow. There's no school. <laughs> I lost track of the days of the week pretty much. <laughs> but it was good. Very restful. All right. Back to business as usual. Doing what we do best. And that's helping the community, helping people out there. 
with respect to all legal issues. And again, it all starts with having that number saved and uh, using it if you want to be connected to us, 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Um, I don't know. Uh, squeeze, uh, give us some guidance here. Where do you want to start? You want to start? Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, yeah. as usual, what I'd like to do, um, I mean, Nelson and I like this. We like your war stories, you know, so we like for you to jump off the show with your war stories about how great an attorney you are, not touting yourself, but I am, and all the people who have been a part of the $110 million that you, the case handler, have settled for them. So, so we, we want to hear we want to hear your, your your war stories as we warm up the immigration side. You will speak on the personal injury side. So once again, I'd like to remind everyone out there, this show is called Cruising with the Case Sadler. It's where we speak about personal injury and immigration. By far, we have proven over the past few months that there's absolutely no other firm that can come anywhere near PPID when it comes to personal injury and immigration. I can say it until I'm blue in the face, but I'm black, so you won't see the blue. But listen up, it's true. All right. By the way, that rhymes. Wait a minute, you're it's, black. It's very, it's very, it's it's very important that you all reach out to this firm. And ladies and gentlemen, let me say this before I ask Adam to share one of his war stories as I as I give him access to do that. Seriously speaking, out right now, how many firms are giving you the opportunity to go for a test drive? How many? I mean, seriously, how many firms are saying, you know what? Before you actually, you know, uh, buy the car, why don't you go for a, a test drive yourself and see if you like us? I mean, PPID is the only firm overall on this station, maybe anywhere in the tri-state area that is doing this. And I'm speculating, but I'm sure by the way that we have proven what it is that we can do here with cruising with the case center. Let me add, let me add though, that, that we are definitely the, the most qualified firm doing that. You know, I was listening to some advertisements about some immigration attorneys giving free advice over the phone, but, but these practices have been, you know, around for, for only a few years. So a, a top-notch quality firm that has had decades of successful results offering absolutely free advice, I think you're absolutely right, is a unique concept right now, and we're proud to do it. Absolutely. And, and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we all know how much time that I have actually on the radio on 93.5 FM. But when you see I go out of the segments, OK, like on a Saturday, which is supposed to start at seven and I started at six just to make everyone understand that this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not a bluff. This is serious. Immigration is a minefield. Personal injury. You only got one chance. So that's the reason why I started early so that everybody can get in there and actually make the call. Go for a test drive. The test drive is get a free consultation with Alexandra, with Conrad Pollock, with Nelson Madrid, truly the maverick. Make the phone call to 844-774-3529. Once again, get yourselves a free, free, free immigration consultation on the phone. Get yourself a consultation with Adam Handler before you even hire him for your accident case but you've got to call one number. It's free. Get that test drive and they will prove and show you that they are truly the best in their class. Now I can say it once again, but not them, but they have already proven themselves. The number 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Now for immigration, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to actually start placing your questions on Facebook in the comment section, please do that. Place your questions in the comment section on Facebook on my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, or Adam's page, The Case Handler, or Pollock's, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico's page, PPID. All right? But let's switch it over to Adam. We want to hear one of his war stories where he has actually helped a client, okay, where a settlement is concerned after an accident. Yeah. This is what we all what do here. Adam, come on. It's the shark. It's the shark. Come, come on. on. Oh, the shark. The shark. <laughs> Adam, I told you, man. I told you. Man. The shark. I love the shark, you know? I love the shark. You know, that's the only time I love a shark when they go for the juggler for our clients. Well, listen, I'm happy to share these war stories. It's something that I'm really proud of. You know, this is the way that, you know, we're measured as personal injury attorneys, uh, results. And of course, we can never guarantee a successful result um, when anybody brings a case to us, but we have a proven track record of successful results. I have personally recovered, and I'm calling it now because with the last settlement last week of 1.8 million. We are at 120 million for my career. I'm calling it right now. 120 million dollars 
over the course of my career for Case Handler clients. And that's a number that I'm super proud of. Uh, uh, the only other number I'm even more proud of is three, and that's for my three daughters. But uh, 120 million uh, is, is for the Case Handler clients. So the people that trusted me with their one and only shot at financial justice. There are no redos in personal injury cases, ladies and gentlemen. We say it over and over and over. One chance, one choice, uh, your case handler. That's really what it comes down to. And it's 844-774-3529. But a, a story that I want to share is a story that you know came, came to us uh, several years ago. This was actually a, um, a case. I don't know why I can't share my screen. You know, that's something I got to work out. But uh, I'll just t tell you a little bit about it. It's, it was a, uh, a, a supermarket slip and fall accident, which sounds, uh, you know, sounds right in the middle. You hear people all the time, oh, I slipped in a supermarket. Oh, I slipped in a store. They owe me money. You know, this was a different situation. This was a, a situation where a woman in the Bronx was uh, at a supermarket uh, right off the Grand Concourse. And as she was checking out, uh, she took a, after she paid her groceries and she's leaving the supermarket, uh, she slips on a, on a substance, goes down uh, on her back, uh, first on her knee and then on her back. Um, terrible, terrible pain. Uh, the manager of the store ran over and what had happened apparently is that somebody uh, had broken um, a, 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 a olive oil uh, jar and the olive oil was over the floor and the manager called the staff over to clean it up, but they just didn't do a sufficient uh, enough job and the floor was still very, very slick, um, no warning signs, nothing. Uh, the manager, uh, you know, apologized profusely. Uh, the ambulance came, they took uh, my client to Jacoby Medical Center where she was uh, uh, diagnosed with um, a strain in her knee and a strain in her back. Doesn't sound too serious. Uh, make a long story short, she, she uh, was, you know, continuing physical therapy with no success and she actually wanted needing a surgery on her knee. Uh, we filed the lawsuit against the supermarket and guess what? They denied it ever even happened, right? They, they, they couldn't find the footage of the fall. They couldn't find the footage uh, of the initial um, olive oil uh, breaking and the cleanup, couldn't do anything. Uh, and they basically then started to contend that she on her way out of the building, uh, you know, tripped over her own feet and, and fell to the ground. And they, as a courtesy, called 911. It was such... A, 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 a sham and all of the witnesses that we called uh, the clerk at, at the store, the manager at the store, they all said the same story uh, that, that she, you know, she, um, you know, causes herself. And that was a difficult, it was a, it was a problem. Uh, it was a serious issue because, you know, in personal injury cases uh, it's usually one word versus another. And the way it works is in the civil uh, justice system that uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the burden of proof on the plaintiff is by the preponderance of evidence. You hear that all the time. What's the burden of proof? In a, uh, in a criminal case, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Uh, in, in, uh, in civil system, it has to be the preponderance of the evidence, the, the weight of the evidence. Even if it's slip tips ever so in favor of one side, that's the side that wins. And, you know, we had multiple witnesses against us, but we went to trial. Uh, we were able to prove our case. We were, the jury absolutely believed her. And we got her two hundred and ten thousand dollars. So a case in that that could have yielded her absolutely nothing. She walked away with two hundred and ten thousand dollars, and couldn't couldn't be couldn't be prouder of, of the work we did because I remember, you know, she was just feeling absolutely uh, desperate that she wasn't going to get anything, and then she actually wound up walking away with uh, a significant amount of money. So these are the kind of things we do here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, whether it's a car accident, a construction accident. Um, a slip or trip and fall, either outside or inside somewhere. You know, we're here to help. We're here to get you the best possible result because we know that you got that one chance to get it right. And hopefully you'll make that choice of an attorney. Your boy, the case handler at PPID. Uh, again, uh, we hope this doesn't, uh, you know, we don't get your calls because that means that things have gone terribly wrong, but you can never ex uh, anticipate when they're going to happen. And you have to, even these days, I think we've learned our lesson. You have to expect the unexpected. And to be prepared um, is to be successful. And to be successful is having PPID in your corner. 844-PPID-LAW or 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Once again, you are tuning in to Cruising with the Case Handler right here each and every single weekday, 8.30 a.m. on 93.5. On Saturdays, we jump it off somewhere around 6 
p.m., but the official show is between 7 and 8, and also on Sundays at 12 noon. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, for personal injury, you need to reach out to this man, the man that you just heard his voice speaking on a true success story. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. And even if you do have a question, a general question on personal injury, feel free to call 844-774-3529 or place it on the Facebook pages, the multiple Facebook pages that we have here. And of course, place those questions down for immigration as we switch to immigration. Adam Handler, thank you so much for that war story and helping out that lady who um, um, got into that accident in that grocery store. And a lot of people, Adam, whenever they fall in a grocery store, the myth or the saying is that, oh, it's just a grocery store accident. Don't even bother to call it a journey. I have heard that so many times, these, these accidents. But I always say, no matter how small, no matter how big the accident is, just make a phone call over to PPID. Speak with Adam. Find out if there's a case or if there's no case or what can be done. You never know. So call him at 844-774-3529. So the man on the totem pole, the big man on campus, Conrad Pollock, I'm going to ask for you to uh, switch us into immigration full on and bring us up to speed. I know it's been a holiday weekend. I know a lot's been going on. Just reiterating a few things I would love for you to do. And then we'll speak with Alexandra and of course the Maverick, all right? So what's happening, Conrad? Um, well, it was a pretty quiet weekend on the immigration front. I, I don't believe there's much uh, news to report. Um, the service is still, uh, the service office in New York City is still planning on opening on June 4th. In fact, and our office currently is still planning to open in New York City on January on, on June first, next Monday. Uh, we're waiting on the governor for uh, what's what the deal is going to be with the rest of New York State. Um, and um, actually, we invited Alex uh, to come on this morning because she has a lot of the uh, current stuff going on and updates and things that she wanted to talk about. So I don't really want to steal her thunder because I see she's just chomping at the bit there, waiting to. Speak her, speak her mind, and tell us all yeah. all the stuff that she knows about, and that she's been watching. She's been waiting all weekend to, to spread among the community. So, without further ado, Alex Bondikov, boss lady, Alex, go for it. Boss lady, Alex, welcome. I don't know, I don't know how you came up with the boss lady nickname, but I should have my thirteen-year-old watch this because she reminds me several times a day that I'm not the boss of her. But I guess it's uh, the age. Um, the one thing that happened over the weekend, so we have another travel ban, COVID-related travel ban, and this time it's uh, cool. people who have traveled to Brazil for the past 14 years, uh, 14 days, excuse me. But other than that, it has been quiet. Um, uh, to get back to your point, Squeeze um, or Adam, um, about the consultations that um, I have been uh, having over the past several weeks, uh, many people, um, call uh, when they get stuck in the process. They may have filed their own cases and now things are either delayed or there's problems. And this is when they call and that's exactly when they should be calling an attorney uh, because things change and things get significantly more complicated by recent developments. Um, but but Alexandra, thing, not, to, not to interrupt you, you're saying that's when they should be calling an attorney when they They have, should be calling from the beginning. They should be calling yes. from the beginning. Exactly. But it's right. what Nelson is extremely passionate about, you know, yeah. when he gets that face like, well, you should have called me from the beginning. I, I think oh, I meant that if, yeah, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. But I meant if, if people are listening to this and they realize that they're in that position, they should be calling us. But also people who are thinking ahead of petitioning for, for, for a loved one or are thinking about filing an immigrant visa, call now because when things get complicated, things get really complicated. Right. Um, so um, a lot of calls that I've been getting um, is about the public charge rule, uh, and it's uh, somewhat of a recent development. Uh, and I'm sure that my colleagues have been talking about this on this program um, before, but I think it's really important and it uh, bears repeating again. Uh, this is an area that will see a lot of, um, uh, let's just say, traffic. Uh, it came into effect in February, right before the COVID-related uh, closures. So we don't know how it will play it out yet. Um, I think we'll start seeing um, requests for evidence about documents um, in, the, in the coming several months. 
but until people um, are interviewed by USCIS for the green cards, we won't know how things will play out. But we have to be prepared nonetheless, um, and I can't stress this enough, call an attorney because this is an area that is extremely complicated. There's a brand new 18 page long form um, that asks for everything under the sun, your entire life story basically, uh, and, and you're gonna need help. I mean, I, when I was going through the process myself 20 something years ago, um, it, was, it was very straightforward. You know, your petitioner calls an affidavit of support and that was sufficient, not anymore. Okay, got you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's Alexandra Bondakov. And of course, she's here on the show, cruising with a case handler. And also, of course, she's an attorney at the law firm PPID. Call them at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Alexandra, here's a question for you. My brother died in Jamaica. He left behind his daughter, my niece. The mother isn't able to care for the baby. The mother wants her to come here to the United States to live with me. Is it possible? Well, it's going to be extremely difficult because um, a, bro a brother can, I mean, somebody cannot petition for their niece, basically. So, uh, how, first of all, how old is the daughter? There may be other ways for her to come. Um, if she is old enough to become a student, she may be able to apply for a student visa and, and come here. What about here. adoption? Is that possible? Uh, that may be possible, but international adoptions are very difficult right now. If uh, And I'm not sure if Jamaica is a, is a hate country. The process is extremely, extremely complicated. And it would require the birth mother to, you know, you have to prove that the child was basically abandoned. And these are not easy things to prove. Absolutely. Oh, the, um, actually, if I could just jump in. Uh, give, give me the facts again, Squeeze. I, I... All right, it says, it says, my brother died in Jamaica. He left behind his daughter, my niece. The mother okay. isn't able to care for the baby. The mother wants her to Got come it. to the United States. Right. Um, the only thing that I could think of would be, as you suggested, Squeeze, an adoption. However, as Alex said, it's going to depend on, on the child's age. In order for there to be even a chance of having that child immigrate as an adoptive child, um, the child would have to be under 16 years of age when adopted. And uh, if I remember correctly, there has, there has to be two years of physical custody uh, between the child and the adoptive parent. So... Unless that child is under 16 and they can get that adoption going in Jamaica before he turns 16 and they can prove to the immigration service that at least the child has lived under the new father's roof in Jamaica for the last couple of years, uh, that's the only way they're going to be able to do the case. And even then, it's going to still take a couple of years because the father, as a permanent resident, I'm assuming, he's, or is he a citizen or a permanent resident? Let's assume he's a citizen. Then he could get the kid. He could get the child here within a year or so, in normal times. So gotcha. they have a lot of hurdles to jump through. Got you. Eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Cruising with a case handler. Personal injury and immigration. Call that number. You want to uh, deal with your accident case? Reach out to Adam, the case handler. Eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Want to deal with your immigration situation? Reach out to Conrad, Nelson, or Alexandra. Eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. You know what I love about this man? Adam, it, this is great, man. We've got three immigration attorneys on all at the same time. This is, I've never had that many immigration attorneys on at the same time on any show. You know, this is phenomenal. And ladies and gentlemen, here's another quick one. Uh, before we get to the top of the hour, asking for a friend who is a green card holder and stuck in Jamaica due to COVID-19. Is that going to stop her coming back to the United States? That's one question um, from Ma Dukes. Then there's another one from Joseph says here. How long you have to wait for your green card interview after you've received your work permit? So that's two questions. Is it me? Okay, so if, if the person who's stuck in Jamaica right now has a valid green card, nothing's preventing them from coming back home unless there's flight disruptions. So okay. none of the travel bans would apply to somebody who's already a permanent resident with a valid document. With respect to the second question, how long uh, people would get their interviews scheduled after they receive the uh, work authorization card. At this moment, it's anybody's guess, right? I mean, USCIS is significantly backlogged because of uh, the several months that they were um, closed. So I don't know, under regular circumstances, depending again on the nature of the case, if it's a family-based, if it's employment-based, 
I don't know uh, the, the facts, the underlying facts, but um, generally it will take about a year in New York. Some some districts um, are not as busy and it may be faster. Got you. Uh, one thing jump in on the, um, the, the person with the green card outside the United States. Let's uh, expand on that a little bit. Let's assume that they've been out of the country for five months. It needs to get back before six months typically. Usually six months is the dividing line. If you stay out of the country for more than six months, when you come back, especially if you've been doing it a lot, that you've done it two, three, four times over the last couple of years, if you stay out more than six months and come back in the seventh or the eighth month, there is a presumption in the law that you have abandoned your residence. Now, it's up to the government to demonstrate that you've done that, and it's it's fairly easy to rebut, assuming you have contacts in the U.S., you know, like a permanent job here, or, or you have a, a property here, your entire family is here. Um, so it's usually a, a fairly easy presumption to rebut on the part of the worker, um, on the part of the person coming in after six, after being out for six months. Now, let's assume they've been out for a year or longer. If they've been out for a year or longer, the law presumes he has lost his green card. And when he comes back to the United States, um, the, the likelihood is that CBP at the airport is going to take away his green card and put him into what's called deferred inspection. And he'd have to prove that he didn't intend to abandon his residence. Again, if you're out more than a year, the law presumes that you've abandoned your green card, that you did it on purpose. Now, obviously, with what's going on right now, there are many exceptions. A lot of people are, haven't been able to come back with that one-year deadline uh, looming, or uh, they haven't, uh, you know, haven't been able to find a flight, or maybe they've been sick, or maybe they've been caring for relatives, or sick, sick spouse, sick grandmother back in their country. Uh, if they can document the reason why they couldn't get back within a year, they could overcome likely. They could likely overcome that presumption that they abandoned their residence. Not really something that I'm going to recommend that a person is going to do on their own, but it is much more, it, it, I, I should say the service is a little more lenient because of the COVID situation than gotcha. they normally would be. Gotcha. Right? Okay. We're going to the top of the hour, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone that's listening to us on 93.5 FM, it's the day after Memorial Day. It's a Tuesday, and we want for you to switch over to Facebook. My page is David Squeeze Anarchy, Adam's page, the case handler is the case handler, and also PPID's page, Pollock, Pollock, Icing, and Seco. Make sure you check out that. Or call us now for your free immigration phone consultation off the air. It's 844-774-3529. Call when you get into an accident. Adam Handler is the man, your case handler, 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Let's switch over. It's nine o'clock. All right. Nicely done. Nicely done, guys. <laughs> okay. Nice, clean show so far. I love it. Love it. The flow is just right. I got some immigration questions in. Got Adam's true success story in before we get off of 93.5 FM. So um, let's continue um, the talk. Adam, um, I just wanted for you to pick up um, where you left off with uh, personal injury as we switch back to, to, sure. before we back to a couple of questions. One of the things I, I like reiterating a lot of people out there get into accidents and they do absolutely nothing at the moment they get into the accident. I need for you to talk a little bit about that, why there's a sense of urgency when they get into an accident. A lot of people sit around and wait until they get into pain. A, a dude called me over the weekend, squeeze, I've had this accident. I got into this accident over six months ago and now I'm realizing I have serious injury. Yeah. What should he well, I mean, I would, I would say most people out there when they're unfortunately in an accident are, are doing something about it right away. I, I it rarely um, are you getting calls or are we getting calls saying, you know, I got into an accident and, I, you know, I didn't really do anything about it because generally speaking, that means that, you know, they weren't hurt. Listen, there's plenty of accidents out there. I've seen it. I've seen car accidents in which, you know, the cars are literally destroyed. And the people can walk away with not even as much as a bad hair day. Uh, and then I've had situations where there's been minimal damage to a vehicle uh, and somebody's got a very serious injury. I mean, I remember we once had a case in which there was, when I tell you a, a scratch, a, a paint scratch on the bumper, um, and the guy had a really bad back injury. Um, and because uh, he, was, he was stopped at the light, he was actually turned to the side talking to his passenger. And he was hit in the rear, not hard, but the, the fact that instead of going back and forth, he went side to side, you know, he twisted up his back and he wound up having some injections to the back, um, you know, pain management. 
And the insurance company uh, for the car that hit him said, there's no way. Uh, we're not paying for this. There's no way this guy came up with this injury. They hired some cockamamie uh, biomechanical engineer to come in and say, you know, the force of this and the delta force of that and the coefficient of friction, it's impossible. It's, there's no way. Um, and then Jerry wound up giving this guy over $400,000 uh, just because, you know, we were able to provide quality evidence. And that's what it's all about. And my job, I'm only as good as the evidence. And if you're in an accident, what's the evidence? The evidence is a police report. The evidence is a witness statement. The evidence is photographs, videos, whether it's a car accident or a construction accident. We have, an, we have this big case right now, a potentially multi-million dollar case in which a gentleman was working on a new construction building. He was about six feet off the ground. And one of the uh, orange, uh, they call them uh, vertical netting, uh, gave way. It's a plastic, uh, plastic mesh net and gave way. And he fell to the ground. He fell you know, six feet off the ground and his coworker started videoing it. And he's on the ground, like in terrible pain. Uh, and, and that's what it's going to come down to. The jury's going to see that video and they're going to be like, damn, this guy was really suffering. And that's why, you know, we, we can, that's how we turn cases into multi-million dollar cases when we can really prove without, you know, like I say, with the preponderance of evidence, that, that somebody did have an accident the way they said they had it and also have injuries in which they claim to have it. And that's why we have doctors support us, medical records. But again, it all comes down to the evidence. And if you get into an accident and you don't do anything about it, how the heck am I going to prove your case, right? It, 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 how the heck am I going to prove, number one, that the accident happened, right? A lot of people get into accidents and you just leave the scene. How are we going to prove the accident happened? Number two, how are we going to prove your injuries if you don't get medical attention? And I understand these days, and we are getting, we are actually getting these phone calls that people are hesitant to go to the emergency room um, after getting to an accident, uh, just because of fear of, of catching, you know, uh, COVID. Uh, but, uh, you know, we urge people, anybody out there, if God forbid you're in an accident right now, make sure it's reported and to make sure within 24 hours, if you are injured, you know, to see somebody, even if it's your, your, your primary care physician, just to be able to get checked out. Maybe they have to do a few x-rays, but most importantly for what I need to do, have it documented, you know, that I am in pain. My knee hurts, my shoulder hurts, my back hurts. Uh, without that documentation, without that evidence, I really don't stand a chance of being successful for you. Okay. Once again, folks, the number is 844-774-3529. That's Adam Handler, your case handler. He, of course, heads up the personal injury department and is a partner at the law firm Paula Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. Make sure you reach out to him if and when you do get hurt, 844-774-3529. And before we quickly jump it over to immigration, um, Adam, one of the things that comes up in my community, the Caribbean community, is that if multiple people are driving in a car and they're all family members, and one of the family members in the car gets hurt, they don't want to sue because they said, oh, right. you're going to sue me, you know, right. you know, why are you going to sue me and all yeah. of that? We get those calls. We get those calls a lot. And, and here, this is this is the deal. And this is what I say. First of all, if you're in a car accident, uh, New York law, just like New Jersey law, uh, New Jersey is a little bit different, but let's use New York. It's a little bit more straightforward. New York law provides that the car you're in, regardless of fault, of fault, is responsible for your medical bills and your time out of work. It's called no fault insurance. So what does that mean? Squeeze, you and I are in an accident. Somebody runs into our back while we're stopped. Of course, not our fault. It's the car behind us fault. But your, let's say I'm driving. My car insurance will pay my medical bills and your medical bills. And then we go after the other vehicle for our pain and suffering. But the only insurance company responsible for the medical bills is my insurance. So you have to put in a claim. You're not suing the person. You're just putting in a claim with the insurance. And a lot of people think... Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the insurance will drop them or the rates will go up. If you're not at fault, that's not going to happen. All right. But there are situations in which you're driving with your friend or your family member and they cause the accident. Right. And you're you're you've got you've got, uh, you know, medical bills. And also now you've got pain and suffering. You've got to go after that vehicle that was responsible, even if it's your family member. Um, you know, you, you got to do it because. You know, if you don't, nobody else is going to pay for the damage that's done to you. And I know a, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to you know, bring a claim against somebody I know. But that's why we have insurance. Trust me. The insurance companies are more than happy to take your premium every month for insurance coverage. 
The last thing they want to do is pay out. But that's why you have the coverage. If God forbid an accident happened, if God forbid disaster strikes, you know that the insurance will take care of everything. But again, you shouldn't be thinking, overthinking this, underthinking this. If you're in an accident of any kind whatsoever and you've sustained an injury to your body, it would behoove you, right? Your favorite, well, one of your favorite words, uh, to, to give us a yeah, ring. 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Nelson, am I lying here? Am I, am I speaking facts? Am I speaking truth? No, absolutely. I just, right, so you, now, I just wanted you to say something. So I, yeah, I, 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 got, I, got, I got a question for Nelson. This is one that came Wait, up. Hold on, hold on one second, Sweezy. I'm sorry. Before we get to the question, actually, let, let's go back to the phone calls we've been getting. And I think this is a very important point that we mm -hmm. haven't really hit on in uh, previous discussions we've had. You know, I've gotten several calls from people who have started cases either on their own or with another attorney. You know, it's not as simple as it sounds for a new attorney to just jump in the mix. Okay. It literally takes immigration several months to update, to update their records and note the change of attorney. So there, you know, again, there is a possibility that hypothetically you get a request for evidence, I respond, and now it goes to your old attorney and not to me because immigration has not updated their records. And again, this is why it's so important to have a competent attorney from the very beginning of your case. Because again, having an attorney jump in later is not as simple as it sounds. You know, um, as I said, you know, we have cases where we have tried to come in and it literally takes immigration anywhere from four to six months just to update their records before they're, they're even willing to speak to us. Because if I call, they could turn around and say, well, you're not the attorney of record. No, but I've filed a notice of appearance with you several months ago. We haven't gotten it. Please send it again. And you're playing cat and mouse with them for a few months before you're actually um, put into their system. You know, and it's funny because we've gotten the successful outcome, but the old attorney has gotten the credit because the client will say, well, my old attorney got the approval right after we responded. Right, right. You know, so right. that, that creates think. confusion. It also... You know, again, it takes time, you know, so I just wanted to point that out because unfortunately it's a very common theme. And it's the reason why they should come to you in the first place. Correct. Right? In the beginning. Yeah. So people, uh, you know, I implore you once again, another of my favorite word, all right, to reach out to PPID when it comes to immigration or personal injury. Call them at 844-774-3529. Nine. That's 844-774-3529. I've got two hey, questions. Please, if I could just jump in for a sec, something I've, I meant, I've been meaning to talk about just briefly. And I'm curious, um, you know, um, these unemployment checks that have been coming in from the government uh, for $1,200, uh, we've mentioned on previous broadcasts that if the U.S. citizen worker who's receiving that check is married to an immigrant, that they're not getting those checks. Um I'd be curious, and obviously I'm not talking to even about a, a, a necessarily an illegal, an illegal immigrant. If the spouse doesn't have a social security number, maybe they're working with a tenant, um, with a, off a W-7 taxpayer ID number. If they file their tax returns jointly, all right, U.S. citizen with a social security number files his tax return jointly with a spouse who happens to use a taxpayer ID number instead of a social security number, they're not getting that $1,200 check. I'd be curious if anybody out there who's listening has noticed this. Um, just, you know, if, if so, I'd love to hear it because we've been hearing about it, reading, I actually been reading about it, but I haven't heard anything from any clients yet that didn't get their checks. But I'd be curious to know that because again, the government specifically excludes US citizens from getting that $1,200 unemployment check um, if they're married to an immigrant, uh, an illegal immigrant in particular. Okay, once again, Conrad Pollock, managing partner. Of course, we call him the maestro. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you reach out to him or the other attorneys at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Here um, are two very odd questions. All right. Um, O'Neill says, as a permanent resident, are you allowed to have permits to carry, especially in New York State? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, this is so, I'm not giving legal advice here, obviously, but 
I believe if you have a clean record um, and you're not on any kind of watch list for the government or terrorism or anything like that, I believe having a green card will enable you to carry. I don't know about carrying, but certainly no, be able to. No, 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 not carrying. It, you can apply, but the likelihood of you getting it, right. I can tell you, is very minimal. You, it's it's mostly people in different capacities that can do it. But just as a normal person, that New York State is the one of the toughest, if not the toughest state. Well, certainly yeah. carrying, but in terms of a permit, obviously also every state is different. Uh, New right. York is obviously one of the more difficult states in, in order to get a license. But to get a gun permit, I yeah. believe green card, you're okay as long as you're clean otherwise. Right. Uh, Caroline, forget it. That I, that I couldn't tell you. Yeah, forget about that. All right. And another question here, and these are non-immigration questions. Um, my question is, can I register a company in America as an outsider? Hmm. An outsider? Uh I'm I guess they're saying they're not a they're not they're not a permanent outside. resident. Or, I'm assuming it means immigrant. Um, you don't register your company in America per se. You register per state. Now I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about incorporating. Um, right. Now you want to form a corporation. It is a state matter. In New York, you would fill out some forms with the Department of State in Albany, and you would incorporate, um, and your company would then be given a taxpayer ID number, and that company that you create actually becomes sort of like an individual with its own social security number, pays its own taxes, and so on. Now, obviously, I'm simplifying. Every state is different, plus that entity, once it's created, is taxed as a separate entity. So there are there are all kinds of issues involved, but the, the answer is whether you are an immigrant, an illegal immigrant even, as long as you can get someone to provide you with a social security number to use, you can incorporate your business. Okay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Cruiser with a case handler, personal injury and immigration respectively. Um, here's a question from over the weekend. Um, my, this wasn't from uh, Friday. My cousin is married to a USA citizen and got a two years green card and is now waiting for his 10 year card. But his ex-wife complained about his visa, complained rather about his, his visa application misrepresentation. Actually, when he applied for a USA visa, visa rather, in 1997, he falsely mentioned a spouse name in his passport, but he got married in the year 2001. Now she complained to USCIS regarding his previous visa application misrepresentation. Does this affect his green card application? Yes. Uh, well, oh, it, yeah. depe it, depe <laughs> it depends, actually. Um, it depends. Um, you know, I I'd say... No, it probably does. <laughs> well, the question, the question is, number one, is the marriage through which he just got his green card, the two-year green card, right? is that a valid marriage? Is that the one who's complaining? Because if the current spouse who's complaining about her current husband, who she just applied and got, her, got him a two-year green card, they have to go back within those two years, typically. In fact, the law requires... Yeah, the current marriage is a valid marriage, it seems like. All right. They have to submit an application within three months of that two-year expiration date to demonstrate that, that is, it's still a valid marriage. So they would need to submit forms showing that they still live together, those two people. Now, if that's the woman complaining about her husband, that might not work, and he might lose his green card. And in yeah, those situations, ex, the ex and in those situations by the way, in those situations, if whether that's the fact or not, just now I'm just going hypothetical. If that person received his green card from his spouse, and the, the three the three month anniversary, or rather the three months prior to the two year anniversary is coming up, they have to submit that I-751 application. If they can't demonstrate they're living together, not only is that spouse likely gonna lose his green card, he's also gonna be placed into removal proceedings and immigration is gonna try to remove him from the United States. We see that a lot, right? We see it frequently, people get their green cards without a lawyer and then they'll go and something happened, they separated and they submit their application anyway, and then they find themselves in removal proceedings. <laughs> we see it all the time. I don't know if that answers this person's question, but you I know, think I they should pretty much just call. Stuff. I think they should call PPID at eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Something of this complex nature and requires that you speak with one of the attorneys at PPID. You so, know, also, uh, David, I'm sorry to interject. Mm -hmm. um, the past misrepresentation can be an issue as well because it's likely how they demonstrate that the visa would be temporary in nature and obviously that they would have to return back home because they were married to someone back home. 
Not to mention also, going back on what we we had Shruti Bali on, on Friday talking about the naturalization right. situation and the immigration creating an anti-fraud unit going after people who already have their citizenship and immigration tries to take it away to remove them from the country. If this person had some past risk representation that didn't mention on his paperwork, then gets his green card, gets his conditional, gets the permanent card, got the 10-year card, three years later applies for U.S. citizenship. If immigration comes up, they find out that he lied about a previous application 20 years ago. They can not only take away, deny his naturalization or if he got his naturalization, take it away. They can also try to remove him from the country. Immigration has a fraud, anti-fraud unit specifically created to go after people like that. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, cruising with a case Sandler. That's the maestro. That's the maverick, respectively speaking there. And we also heard from Alexandra. We heard from the case handler himself. It's um, great to be here again. You know, I, I missed you guys over the weekend. You know, I felt something like yesterday was like weird. I'm like, what, what? But um, yesterday's show repeat was pretty good. We had a few questions. Yeah, I was, I was, I was listening. And you know what? It's, it's about routine. It's about uh, engaging with you, with each other. We've been doing this now. Well, Squeeze and I have been doing this for over 15 years. But uh, you know, the immigration uh, segment of this show. I, I think we're, we're about five weeks now, maybe even more. And uh, the response has been absolutely overwhelming. You know, we, uh, we never really had a doubt, but uh, it, it's, it's beyond what we could have expected. And, and that's truly remarkable, but it's a testament to you, Squeeze, uh, for your ability as a broadcaster to get the message out. And also, uh, I'll call right now, it's, it, it's, it's a huge credit to the attorneys that we bring on. You know, my partners, uh, Conrad and, and Nelson and, and the other attorneys, um, at the firm, uh, uh, Paul, Paul Kaisi Tisico, that, that really are coming out and giving quality information. And, and I think everybody out there is, is getting to know, you know how we conduct ourselves, not only as professionals, uh, but as coworkers as well. We truly enjoy working with each other. And um, you know, the, the, it's a top-down approach. Uh, and, uh, and that's why our clients are happy. And that's why our clients are well taken care of. You know, when, when a law firm has, can't even handle its own affairs, how the hell are they going to handle the affairs for their own clients? You know, when, 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 when the boss is constantly yelling at the associates and, and the associates are rebelling and nobody's happy at work, you're not going to get good results. I mean, who, who the hell wants to work in that kind of environment? But, you know, what we have is, is very special, is very unique, uh, and it speaks to not only the quality of our firm, but also the quality of the professionals that, that we employ. And, uh, of course, I handle the personal injury cases. Uh, Matthew Goodstein, my associate, you know, we're, we're, we're of the same ilk, you know, we, we treat our clients the same way and we treat them like family and uh, across the board immigration, they do the same thing. You know, they treat our clients like family, uh, like they, they treat their clients like family. And, 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 and that's just, that's just the way we do it. You know? Alexandra has a, has a question, um, Adam, see your hands are up. Oh yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yes. Alexandra, uh, how can I help you? I think that shows how technologically challenged I am. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, okay. so you, we, we saw that. I just, I just want to say, Adam, you're, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. It's a great place to, to work. And we do treat our clients as family because guess what? Sometimes they are family or they're referred by family. Immigration is largely a word of mouth practice. So when you get those referrals, you really want to live up to your name. Okay. Yep. All right. This concludes our show today, gentlemen and lady. And uh, uh, we ended it well with the lady giving the last word. I'm just making it out here now. The boss so, lady. <laughs> the boss lady, Alexandra. This is great. And uh, I, I knew that this show would have been uh, good. Um, I do believe we still have ways to go. And I am saying that regardless of the influx of calls that we have had, I am still not happy with the fact that a lot of people are still trying to do their cases by themselves. And I'm talking about the fact that I know, based on what um, Nelson and, and Conrad said weeks ago, um, Alexandra, that people are going to put themselves in a lot of issues by doing their cases themselves. I am very concerned about people getting put in removal proceedings, people now being delayed for months, maybe years, because they screw up. Um, doing their immigration work themselves. So I just want to say to each and everyone out there, as we conclude the show, yes, this is an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm 
of all apollic ice in the sea core and prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. However, as, Al, as Adam said er, earlier, it would behoove me not to let you understand that you should call 844-774-3529, speak with the professionals for free off the air as a consultation on the phone and get your questions answered initially and then hire them. Go for the test drive with a free consultation and then you hire them. Dial the number 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Gentlemen. Squeeze, before you sign off, one yep. more thing that I forgot to mention, and, I, and we, we need to repeat this daily. Um, as we mentioned last week, there was um, notice that the Immigration Service, USCIS, is running out of money. Um, and that's, I believe it's going to be mid-July that they're supposed to be running out of money. USCIS is funded by user fees, meaning filing fees, meaning you file that adjustment of status application or you submit that visa petition for your spouse back in your country. Uh, those fees that you pay to the Immigration Service, that's what funds USCIS to be able to do their jobs. They're not getting the money they normally do for various reasons, which we don't have time to go into right now, but fees are going up. Filing fees are going to be going up dramatically. And on top of the filing fees rising, immigration is going to tack on a 10% surcharge to those increases until their budget shortfall is, 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 is disappears, which who knows when that happens. Um, so uh, fees are going to be probably going, be going up within the next month or so. If you have cases you're looking to file, get it done. Call us, get it done. Even if you don't call us, get those applications filed. And when you get an RFE and, or they ask you for the 944, then you can call us, all right? And then we'll take care of it. But right. call us in advance, save yourself a lot of time and aggravation and money. Uh, but file those applications ASAP, folks. Okay. 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529. Everyone out there watching us, listening to us, have yourself an amazing day. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. Thanks so much, Chris.